watched a lot of these communities degraded by one government after another, social infrastructure stripped, um, you know, social infrastructure not equivalent to that of a non-Aboriginal community only 50, 100 kilometres apart. The degradation of these communities is in the making of these communities. It's the making of one government after another. Do they have to beg? Is it right that they have to beg for clean water? Is it right they have to beg for power lines? Is it right they have to beg for a school? Is it right they have to beg for a quality of schooling so that they're employable when they graduate? I'd like to see those things addressed so I can relax a little bit that we're actually heading in the right direction. I'd like to see many things um, you know, but in the end, look, for me, I've been somewhat scarred, and I'm not the victim. The victims are those actually on the ground or whatever, but I have been scarred by the funerals that I've been to. In one community recently, we buried three kids in five days. When they're dying at eight, nine, and ten years of age, and that sense of hopelessness is from the beginning of life, and when they get out of that protective factor, no matter how train wreck uh, their childhood is, but childhood is a protective factor. If we haven't dealt with the pronounced negative behaviours uh, and, and the sense of hopelessness in childhood, that plays out when they're 18, 19, when they're family building themselves, when they're having to navigate through the world on their own or whatever. That's the highest risk group. The highest risk group is 18 to 30. One in two of all deaths in that age group is actually a suicide, an unnatural death. So it plays out. We're missing you know, in this country what we should be doing, uh, translating this pressing issue into a national priority. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm personally one for a Royal Commission of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander suicides. And um, and we haven't had that deep examination. It'll be intertwined with uh, multifactorially, but it'll also allow for the opportunity to have a discussion on racism because the disparity translates toxically as racism. The internalizing of grief, loss and racism actually is um, toxic. It's toxic. And I have not, in this business of shame and taboo for these families, in the sense that they don't want to talk about it. Well, that's not true. The hundreds of families that I've sat around the table, uh, you know, who are grieving because of a loss do want to speak. It's the listening that's not happening. It's the listening that's not happening. I wouldn't pause anything on the ground for a Royal Commission. Everything that needs to happen has to happen because a Royal Commission could take a year, two years. But uh, we do need to table an in-depth discussion and get to the heart of the issues and smash down some of these myths and prejudices and biases or whatever. But for me to relax, I don't want to have to be going to funerals you know, three and five days, three graves in a row that I'll never forget. And uh, there's now a fourth in that particular community just weeks after. And, uh, yeah, uh, steps in the right direction will help me relax. And while we still argue at the same time for political reform or whatever, going for that big picture, but we can't sell out the narrative of human misery and suffering on the ground at this time uh, and not do what we should be doing for people in whatever way we can and, and working better with what little we've got, whatever, and bringing people together in community. The Leonora bus trip yeah. actually came out of a bus lot of... of yeah, the bus of hope. Community came together after, you know, a lot of tragedy in that community and there was a, a high level of community distress. And, uh, and uh, you know, after some of the initial meetings between community and government agencies, um, there was a, a, the distress wasn't reduced. The spreading of love didn't happen. The, the smart talk didn't happen. And, and the, the honest talk didn't happen. The spreading of love didn't happen. There were 10 arrests. There were 10 arrests following that meeting and it no spilled counseling. over. No counselling, no support.